Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. Be sure to check me out over on Rumble. There you'll find all of my stuff from YouTube, plus my political and social commentary and weekly current events, which YouTube frowns on. Links to my Rumble channel, as well as my other YouTube channels, and links to let you order my books are in the description of this video. If you enjoy my content, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. I welcome your comments, even if you disagree with me. Now, on with the video. Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. I'm doing an unexplained megalithic structure video on the Great Sphinx. Before I get into this video, I want to tell you about a new a new uh, uh, book that I've gotten published. Uh, the House Off Farrago Road is now available on Amazon. It's just a fun story about a house where the denizens are not quite normal. Uh, mythological creatures and supernatural forces co-mingle with modern-day law enforcement and the criminal underworld. If the quirky, weird piques your interest, check out The House Off Farrago Road. Available at Amazon. The author's name is H.L. Anderson. That's me. Now, on to the Great Sphinx. Uh, I hope, bef oh, before I get into that, though, uh, I hope everybody had a really great Christmas, and I hope everybody's blessed in the new year. All right. <clears throat> the Great Sphinx. Everyone knows about the Great Sphinx. It's a wonderful creation carved by someone on the plains of, of Giza near the Great Pyramids. Uh, we thought the Egyptians did it, but maybe not. Initially, it was thought to be just an elaborate giant head, but then it was discovered to have a large body, which has been buried, which had been buried under the sand. Uh, it's a, it's a giant animal, possibly a lion. It, 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 the head was apparently damaged or whatever over time. You know, whatever. Maybe the weather. I think there's a. I heard a, a story that Napoleon shot a cannon at it and, the, and hit it in the face. I'm not sure what that's about, but. I don't know if that's true or not, but anyway, the, the Sphinx was a, the bottom part looks like a lion. That's all I'm saying. Uh, it was part of a large complex that had been finished, that, excuse me, that had not been finished. It was more than just a religious fixture. It was part of a sprawling complex with living quarters and other buildings. Many archaeologists believe the complex was added after the Sphinx as living quarters for the builders of the pyramids. Nobody knows any of this stuff for sure. They're they're guessing. They're 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 making informed guesses. Kind of like when you go to the doctor, an informed guess, you know, educated guess, I guess. At any rate, the the working theory now is the the complex was um, living quarters for the people who built the pyramids. Okay, so mainstream archaeology says that the Sphinx is about four thousand years old. New data may disprove that conclusion, however. On the lower sections of the Sphinx body, archaeologists have found what is clearly erosion by water damage. At some point, water lay against the body of the Sphinx for more than 100 years. That's, how, that's the only way that could have happened. The problem with that is that the last time North Africa was underwater was over 800,000 years ago. That means that the Sphinx had to have been around when the area was flooded 800,000 years ago. Ipso facto, the Sphinx is at least 800,000 years old. This blows the 4,000-year conclusion out of the water. This would predate Gobekli Tepe by over 750,000 years. Now, the question becomes, who built the Sphinx? Egyptians didn't sell, settle there until after the Sumerians, and they were about 6,000 years ago. What civilization was in Egypt 800,000 years ago? Who were they? How did they carve this monolithic structure, and why? If this is true, if this is true, the Sphinx may very well predate every other man-made structure on Earth. This one discovery blows Egyptology away and redefines everything we thought we knew about North Africa. Now, again, we don't know. We have to do some more study into this, but the only way that erosion could have happened is if water set against it for over 100 years. That being said, the only time that was the only time that area was flooded like that was over 800 was like 800,000 years ago. So, <clears throat> We're, we're, you know, was that was there a big rock there that the water was at, and then later on they carved it into the Sphinx? Who knows? That, that is a possibility. I'm, you know, that would disprove this eight hundred thousand year theory. But my contention there is, 
Somebody had to have carved it, and it's uh, it's a lot older than four thousand years. That's all I'm saying. So, you know, if you see if you're going to carve the body of the Sphinx, and you see the water damage up against it from from you know ten thousand years ago or whatever, what do they care about? What do the Egyptians care about water damage? They would have carved right carved that right out of there. They would have gotten rid of it. The fact that it's still there says that the Sphinx was there while the water was there. Okay, so that that's all that's all I'm saying. There's a lot about this world we do not know. There's a lot we're being taught in mainstream science and in in our in our schools that simply is not true. A uh, hundred years war lasted a lot longer than a hundred years. Uh, Amerigo Vespucci did was not the his last name Amerigo was not the impetus for America. That was the. There's a lot that's being taught in schools that simply ain't true. So do your own research. If you've got comments or if you have any theories, stick them in the comments. I'm, I'm sure we would all love to read them. Hope this finds everybody well. You folks have a good one. God bless one and all. There is a house in New Orleans where the monsters all hang out. When the police detective, who happens to be a skinwalker squirrel, uncovers a plot by a paranormal perpetrator, he has to enlist the aid of his fellow housemates. If you enjoy a modern, quirky take on historical mythology, check out my new original novel, The House Off Farrago Road.